what we're going to do through this channel is show you things that you can do that are not going to cost you the earth, that are not going to cost you a fortune. Okay, there'll be things that cost money, but there'll be excellent value for money. So today, me and De Niro, who's down there, are off to explore the old railway line, which is now a very nice and very well used cycle and footpath. So we'll uh, let you know what we find. Our journey today starts from Lonehead, just outside Edinburgh, but this cycle path that we're going to be walking on actually starts at Portobello, Edinburgh's seaside, so if you want you can start from there, or you can get the bus to Roslyn and explore the chapel and the glen. If you are the cycling type, this is Route 61 from Portobello to Roslyn. And remember, you can find all sorts of useful information, including maps and bus details, etc, on our website at soas.com. TV. Here's a wee memorial to all the men who died in Bilston Glen. It's, uh, it's quite sad, really. The true price of coal is all those men's lives. And most of the people in this village would have either worked at the mine or worked in industries associated with the mine. So when the mine closed in the late 80s, it ripped the heart out of this community. And, and just what you need to regenerate your town, a massive cog and a great big hog. I mean, that's uh, it's, quite, it's quite impressive, to be fair, but why? We are joining this railway track about halfway along its original length. Now it goes from Portobello, Edinburgh seaside, to Roslyn a sleepy wee village. So why was this railway line that goes from apparently nowhere to apparently nowhere actually built? Well for that we need a wee bit of history. The Edinburgh, Lonehead and Roslyn Railway, as the name implies, linked Edinburgh, Lonehead and Roslyn. And what it did was it provided a way to get coal from the Roslyn coal fields and the Lonehead coal mines back into Edinburgh where it could be used either in the factories there, transported by rail within the UK because Edinburgh was a major transport hub, or exported all over the world from the massive docks at Leith. And this might be a very slow uh, explore because De Niro is stopping for a sniff at everything that we pass. So this may take us some time to get any distance done at all, but hey ho, it's a nice day and uh, I think he's enjoying himself. I don't know what he's sniffing, but I think he's enjoying himself. And that's, uh, that's quite cool. That is a big metal viaduct. That's the longest viaduct of that type in Scotland. And it actually expands and contracts with the weather. So the bearings it sits on move. And looking down there, there's actually a footpath that goes under the bridge. So I think me and De Niro are going to try and find a way down there to have a wee explore and get a better view of this bridge from the bottom. So here we are off for an explore uh, of somewhere where we've never been before. It's about spending most of our life living not very far away from it in Edinburgh. So this should be uh, quite cool. If Mr. Sniff a lot ever stops sniffing a lot. You might think we're a bit obsessed with the Industrial Revolution here, but it's so much stuff left behind. So many really cool bridges and buildings and little reminders of what was once here that's now long, long gone. All sorts of quite interesting structures in these woods as well. There's a big water tank of some sort and there's a very long dock. Pointy and long. Yes, we are trying to get to the uh, path at the bottom of the bridge, but it looks like you have to go down there and we are not doing that. That looks a bit uh, silly. So we're just getting further and further away from from the viaduct and not actually getting much lower down. If you can see it through the trees, there it is there. But I think we'll uh, we'll give this up as a bad idea and we'll head back up and along the path a bit more. And assuming you're not bored with it yet, there's that bridge and there's that greyhound. Greyhound and bridge. Don't get them confused. Right, so this is the Bilston Glen Viaduct, built in 1892 by the North British Railway Company and restored in 1999 by a partnership led by Midlothian Council and the Edinburgh Green Belt Trust. So there you are, there's the history of this bridge. And if you're wondering why I'm suddenly such an expert in the history of this bridge, I am cheating and I am reading that side. But hey, if I hadn't shown you the sign, you would have just looked at this and thought, that man really knows his bridges. So, oh, and there in the distance is our runner. We should really be running, but unfortunately one of us, not naming names, is too lazy. But he'll run about five paces and then stop and look at you like you're an idiot. So there you are, Poulton, Bilston, Lonehead and Roslyn. Only one of which would be on any common tourist itinerary, and that would be, of course, Bilston. <laughs> No, that would of course be Roslyn, obviously, with its uh, Roslyn Chapel and the old castle and all that good stuff. So we're going to head that way now and have a look. Can it be a nice railway path? They're great for running because they're uh, always flat. The trains aren't fans of going upstairs or big hills, so a railway path means flat. It's like a canal path. Find a railway path, find a canal path and run there. Knee hills. The other great thing about
about a railway path is it's very hard to get lost. They tend to go in a straight line, one way out and one way back. Yeah, the first three years of De Niro's life, he saw nothing apart from other greyhounds and his trainers and probably not much in the way of nice things. And now he's out in the countryside sniffing every single thing. And I mean every single thing. We are stopping every four paces for a sniff. He's only doing this now because I'm filming how many things. Whilst he's filming, I'm not going to sniff to make him look stupid. These wee cycle paths always go through like areas of interest, so if you're wanting a shoestring day out, you can't beat just getting a bus or driving to one end of it, parking up and going for a walk and seeing what you can find, because we know along this one there's Roslyn Chapel, where you can have a cup of tea and a biscuit and then uh, walk back again, or get the bus back. It's uh, quite well connected by bus network, this part of the world. When the railway was lifted, a lot of the old stone bridges were left in place and uh, where they weren't suitable to be uh, reused on the cycle path, they've been replaced with these nice wooden ones. So it's all uh, the same level as it was before. There's no real sort of uh, ups or downs, which makes it quite accessible. I mean, obviously accessible as any footpath in the countryside is, but it's all well surfaced. Some of the views are really quite nice. I mean, it's just rolling countryside, although you are just outside of Edinburgh and uh, countryside on your doorstep. Oh, and over there on the hill is a thing. We don't know what the thing is, but we're going to go and have a look. It might be an interesting thing. Sometimes things are interesting. Okay, now that I had never heard of. Uh, that is a memorial to the Battle of Roslyn in 1303. We are going to go and research that because we've never heard of the Battle of Roslyn. I know I'm being a bit like picky, but it's always slightly disappointing when you see what you think is an old monument and it was put up in 1994. You think, oh, I love the whole ear flapping action thing that goes on when he's out walking. It looks like he's trying to take off. Flap, 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 flap. And we were just wondering if we were still on the old railway line or not. And the answer is no, we're not because there is a railway bridge. So we've come off the main path onto a different path. I said there was no chance of getting lost and we end up eating those worms. And this is where the path sort of starts to fizzle out. We come to the village of Roslyn, which we're going to have a wee explore. Uh, have a look at Roslyn Chapel. That looks uh, Masonic, doesn't it? 1894 MP, Margaret Place. But first we're going to go to a nice wee cafe and get a cup of coffee. That's a cracking wee cafe over there for a nice cup of coffee and a biscuit. Dog friendly, even better. And if you don't fancy a cup of coffee, there's a really good pub over the road that does really, really good food. Right, we're going to go and explore Roslyn Chapel, which again, I've never actually been into, but uh, I've lived near it for a while, so I'm not really sure why. Let's uh, remedy that today. Yeah, it's always good you walk past uh, and you see a bit of history and you film it, and it's an inscription above somebody's front door, and as you're filming it, they open the front door and look at you. So there you have the chapel, which we're going to go and have a look at, and uh, there is the visitor centre, which we are going to go through, and we'll let you know what's in there when we find it. I'm guessing it'll be a cafe, a toilet, and very probably a gift shop. Almost definitely a gift shop. There is a recurring motif here and it is a sign that says no photography and no filming. And these are everywhere. And if you do the wee tour, the lady says at the start and at the end, no filming and no photography. So I'm guessing they don't want you filming or doing photography inside. So uh, I will just have to tell you what's in there and you'll have to use your imagination. That's quite impressive, isn't it? That's uh, really intricately carved. Love conquers and death. Yet another really cool thing here to see. There you go, that's the back of the thing. It's uh, not very well lit from the side but equally uh, almost as impressive as the front and over there behind it you have the chapel itself so there you have Roslyn Chapel the stonework is amazing it has to be seen to be believed to be fair it is well worth a visit if you're uh, into architecture or into history or uh, you're a fan of the Da Vinci Code it's fair to say Dan Brown's book had a massive impact on Roslyn Chapel because before the book came out it got a few tens of thousands of visitors a year and after the book came out it was getting hundreds of thousands and the money that these visitors brought in paid to get the place restored and renovated in a third of the time that was planned. It also paid for the new visitor centre which replaced the man in his wee hut that was here before the place became internationally famous. It's nothing if not eclectic because there we have a demon type chap and over there we have what is either a Loch Ness monster but much more likely to be a camel. So you can have a camel and a demon. I wonder if there's a shopping list of uh, of patterns that people could pick from. So when the Sinclair family were saying, right, we want our church decorated, and we want uh, one of those, yeah, we want two demons, three elephants, and a camel, please. I was only joking about the elephants. I don't think there's any elephants here, but there might be, because there's everything else. We just do not do windows like this anymore. Look at all that carving and all the intricacy of what's going on round about it, the window frame and the supports. They don't actually know if these windows originally even had glass in them or if they were just all for show. You can see a lot of where the sandstone has uh, worn away over the centuries. It's uh, difficult to tell what some of these things were. I don't know if they're going to like restore them and redo them or leave it stabilised as is. Either way, it's uh, quite nice to see. 
but everywhere you look you see other little details, there's other little additions that you catch your eye, little flowers and uh, apparently at the top of the pointy bits there's some flowers carved and in those flowers there are holes drilled so bees can get in and out, so the flowers are actually beehives, that's uh, pretty smart. It's quite good being outside when all the people on the tour are inside looking at all the stuff on the carvings and things that are inside the chapel, which I can't show you because I'm not allowed. But I'm sure if you Google it, there's lots of photos of the inside of this place. And I told you they were keen on the no photography and no filming signs, because there's one there. And if you miss that, you have to miss that massive sign that is sitting there and come round here. There's another one. So uh, no photography and no filming. If you are a Da Vinci Code super fan, you will notice that this chapel doesn't look the same as the one in the film. And that's because the one in the film is a model for the outside scenes because at that point this chapel had a massive metal canopy built over it to keep the water out which wouldn't look quite as good in the film. Here at the side door there's uh, more gargoyles for you. If you like a gargoyle this is the place to come, there's plenty of gargoyles. And then more really nice pillars and spires and all that sort of gubbins up there. And over here there is uh, some boobs. So if you want some boobs it's also that might actually be his knees. <laughs> I thought they were boobs, I think they're actually knees. <laughs> When I get home, I'm going to go and look at all this, and the outtake reel is going to be huge because you don't realise how much gibberish you speak until you're filming yourself. <laughs> we're not going to bore you with too much history, but one thing we found quite funny is the fact that when Oliver Cromwell's army were attacking the nearby castle, they actually used this as a stable for their horses. It must have been the most pretty stable in the whole world. The visitor centre's pretty good. It's got a lot of uh, background information on the chapel and lots of uh, old pictures and drawings of how it looked. And obviously, it's a nice gift shop and a nice cafe that's already very busy. A lot of the souvenirs that they have in the shop are uh, specific to the site. This is based on a Latin inscription that's found in the chapel and nowhere else. And up until very recently they had a chapel cat. We think what they need is a chapel greyhound. So they are Roslyn Chapel. It's £9.50 to get in, which is quite a lot I suppose for a shoestring, but if you're here with kids, uh, if under 18s go free with a paying adult, so that uh, brings the price down on average. Damn it. Timed that right again, we are leaving and a busload of tourists has just arrived. And then off in the distance you see a thing. There's a tower over there, we do not know what that is. I think we might go and see if we can find out. We better phone the fairy police because look, that wee fairy's front door's been kicked in. I bet that was a nasty wee goblin that did that looking for fairy dust and fairy treasure. There is a nice old churchyard here as well, but I've been told there's far too many churchyards and war memorials on our little videos, so uh, we'll skip the churchyard and the war memorial, but it's a nice churchyard. Go and see it. Okay, so while we're at Roslyn, we're going to go and have a look at Roslyn Castle, which, like a lot of other castles just now in Scotland, is uh, closed for renovations, but we'll go and see what we can see. Yeah, so there you have it. The castle is uh, very closed while they do work on it to reinstate it all and make it safe. Another victim of increased rainfall, I suppose, but uh, if you want to look at the castle, well, that's what it looks like over there. And above all the noisy birdies, there's the castle from down in the glen. Down in the what? This is where we need that one of the day. It's pretty thick walls and well fortified as you can see and there's the access road up there with this nice arch going underneath it which is the way that I think we are going to go because there's screaming kids back that way and De Niro is not a fan of screaming kids. Again as things that we only see since we started doing these little films for you guys is uh, we've never been down here because you always go to the castle along the top but now that you can't you actually come and have a look and see what else you can see and it's pretty cool I mean that's quite an impressive structure there and obviously that's the walls of the castle itself up there. So if you come down the big hill at the back of Roslyn Chapel where we just uh, saw me and De Niro, it brings you down to Roslyn Glen which is really really pretty and very very worth a visit. It's, uh, it's a beautiful place that we'll now show you a bit more of. And here we see De Niro off down into Roslyn Glen. This is a dog that I'd never seen a flight of stairs a few months ago and now you can hold him back. If you're walking on the railway path, Roslyn Glen is worth a little detour because it is very pretty. You've got the river down the bottom of the hill there and you've got a network of paths and stuff that are all obviously traffic free and uh, nice for a wee visit. Right, come on then. Back up the stairs, or up the slope, whatever you prefer. So we were going to show you one of the cool things about Roslyn Glen, but unfortunately there's lots of kids down there, and De Niro heard them and uh, froze and wouldn't move. Uh, he just stands there and looks at you until you turn round and go back the other way. But you see him there, he's still, you can hear the kids and he's like, I can hear them. I wonder why he doesn't like children. Right, we've come down to the, the car park in Roslyn Glen to uh, see if we can get along to the gunpowder thing the other way, because uh, it better be worth it, and I'm dying to end this uh, little video with a joke. 
And if you can't guess what that joke is by now, uh, keep watching. Actually, calling it a joke is maybe over-egging it a bit. It's just my usual sort of, uh, you know... I'm We've seen a lot of different industries uh, to do with the Industrial Revolution, but here's one I wasn't expecting. This is Roslyn's old carpet factory, which is famous for its tapestries and its velvet table covers. This is such a cool old building, which clearly is still being used as some sort of research centre for renewable energy. That's the stuff that's lying about outside. But that's enough about the carpets. We're off to try and find the old gunpowder mills. All right, gunpowder mills, we're on the right track. And there you are, that is uh, the river that runs through Roslyn Glen. It's, uh, it's quite impressive, it's a really, really nice place to come. I mean, it's just a pretty little place. We like finding pretty places, and this is definitely another one. It's funny, isn't it? Nothing quite says there is an industrial past here, quite like lots and lots of bricks from old factories that were demolished. The River North Esk runs through Roslyn Glen, and uh, back in the Industrial Revolution times that we keep talking about, it would have provided a lot of power for the mills that lined the river, so it wouldn't have been the pretty thing you see now. It would have been dank and dark and dirty, and probably not a nice place to be. And uh, difficult to believe, but not that long ago, like 80 years ago, this was the centre of a gunpowder industry. This is where the gunpowder mills were, that worked for 150 years. You know, they made gunpowder for mining, obviously, but also for the wars from Crimea right up to the Second World War. So it's uh, quite a lot of history here. You know, there's things like this little uh, gable built into the hillside there. I mean, that was built in there, obviously, for safety. If it exploded, it was going to go forward and up. It wasn't going to go back. When the uh, the people used to come here to work, they used to get searched every morning to make sure they didn't have anything that could cause a spark, nothing metal and no matches and even things like horseshoes were made out of brass because brass if you hit it hard enough it doesn't spark so it was all very safety conscious but there's still uh, if you read the big notice board that talks about uh, buildings were replaced and some were lost in accidents i bet they were quite big accidents and i bet one accident here very quickly spread to lots of accidents it's always a mistake to go somewhere and think all right there's nothing here but look at those names there john merrick and john hay and then come with me as we walk across here to this little thing that i just found when i was having a little poke around in the undergrowth it, this little stone is just lying at the side of the path it's 1859 jh and jm and it's cool that we can take that date and those things and get back to Mr Hay and Mr Merrick. And after a particularly cold and bitter winter, it's nice to see the first signs of spring breaking through the ground. We do like it when the snowdrops first put in an appearance. And here we see another part of the old powder mill that's got a big blast wall on one side and then it's got the actual uh, workroom there and it's all double skinned so if there is an explosion there is something of a shock absorber between the inside and the outside and there's a, a brick from Whitehill so that's not come awfully far to be here with us today. There is quite a lot of the old architecture still here, it's, uh, it's nice for a wee look, you've got to be very interested in the history to appreciate it as a, a nice place to come. You can see why if you're wanting to build a gunpowder factory this is quite a good location because it's in the bottom of a valley so any bang is only going to go up the way and on that side of the river you've got that a massive natural wall and this is the remains of the old tramway that moved things about site. This is buried down in the ground for safety, obviously, and it also had wooden rails. Yet another measure to reduce the chance of a spark and the ensuing massive explosion. The only local ingredient here would have been the charcoal from burning local wood. The rest of it was all imported from places as far afield as Syria. So there would have been a fairly bustling in and out of trade here, bringing raw materials in and taking the gunpowder out. I do love these old buildings. I do love the fact that they've been sort of stabilised, but just left. They've not been restored or roofed or anything. They're just a place you can come for a wee sit down or a wee look around or a wee whatever you want. So there you have it, Roslyn Glen's unexpected history of gunpowder production. What a way to end this video with a bang. Sorry, that was the joke. Uh, if you enjoyed this one, not the joke, please like and subscribe and all that gubbins and we'll see you soon for some more Scotland on a shoestring. Do you want to tell the nice people what you just did? Well, I wasn't looking. He must have found some uh, of that famous fox poo that people talk about and went for a wee roll in it. Lovely.